Hello, 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 everyone. I hope everyone's having an amazing day today. So we had a topic picked out for this week, but after our mastermind, like an hour ago now, I think it's necessary to have a very different conversation. Everybody seems to be in a rut this week. Everybody just seems to be stuck in the stuck. They're stuck in the stuck. Because I've talked to somebody who's stuck in just emotional overwhelm. I've talked to somebody else who is stuck in the possibilities of possibly getting a client, but terrified of getting a client. I've got somebody else who's stuck in the, the thing that they started is not working the way that they want. And even though they've got leads, they're not happy with it's not the thing that they wanted. It seems like everybody has a thing that they're just stuck it and there's no reason to be stuck because that's why we're here we're here to support you so you don't get stuck so one of the big parts of that is self-care that seems to be something we come back to all the time so laura says right stuck in the muck i'm a i'm a muck a muck a muck emotions so she has chaos which is normal we have chaos and getting stuck in that chaos mode so self-care, this was such a big thing for me to learn what self-care actually looked like. Because I automatically thought, well, self-care is getting a massage. Self-care is getting a manicure. Self-care is getting a pedicure. Self-care is making an appointment to do X, Y, Z and going here and going there and doing and doing and doing and not actually taking care of myself. My self-care can literally mean sitting on the couch and binge watching something on Netflix, which is not something I've ever done until the last year or so. Self-care can look like me picking up a book that has nothing to do with business, which is also a very big deal for me, and just relaxing and reading for fun. Self-care can literally mean sitting on the couch with a hot cup of hot chocolate and staring into space, which yeah. is also something I've never allowed myself to do. Yeah, and those things I look at are self-maintenance, not self-care. They're part of my maintenance of myself. So Jessica asks, how do you do those things without the negative internal monologue? But God, what are you doing? Don't you know all of the stuff you're just sitting here and reading? Get up, go do stuff. Oh my gosh, that was Jessica that asked that. So some of the things that you need to always remember when it comes to self-care is Sometimes self-care is doing things for your future self, to take care of your future self. So my Betsy, Gina, her version of self-care is she loves her planning time. Her planning time is her self-care, which I always looked at her and went, no, that's a task to do. She was, no, when I plan all of the things out and get everything out of my head, I can then sit quietly and play with stickers and color and relax get out of my head is self-care for future me. I'm self-caring now by getting things out of my head so my head is, is quieter. I'm then getting to play and craft and do the thing. But then I am creating self-care for future me so that future me does not get stuck in decision fatigue. Future me does not get stuck in overwhelm. Future me knows what the fuck I'm doing and can do it without trying to panic of, Oh, I never did that. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I know I'm going to forget about that. Getting it all out of your head. So Kimberly said self-maintenance versus self-care. I love having that separate de designation. I never felt like certain things were restorative care because it was normal maintenance to feel like me. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad that really helped. Using the bathroom, even using the bathroom as a work task, deleting emails, answering emails, writing Facebook posts. All of those are work tasks. Jessica, sometimes I feel like I might get paid to do for my self-care. Like I'm sitting here snuggling a 10-month-old kid right now. But like that's work, but not. You get to love your job. It's okay for your job to be amazing and for you to love every second of it. And then the admin tasks are the things that are the crappy part of your job. It, that's still not self-care. No, I think that is dopamine hacking. I mean, you're definitely hacking your dopamine there cuddling a kitten, 10 month old kitten. And now I'm really jealous because my puppy is with my husband and ignoring me today. He doesn't like me. I'm annoying or something. What are your self care? Th what are things that you do for self care? And Jessica, I'm not going to argue. She just said, oh my God, I hate admin tasks. Yeah, we all do. Nicole said crocheting, coloring, chiropractor. I also brain dump and journal in the morning. See, brain dumping and journaling, Gina taught me. I always looked at that as a task I had to do every day. And I love planning. So wait, planning is a thing for me but it's still i never looked at it as self-care until she said that i'm like oh yeah because i am getting out of my head i am getting everything ready so some of them things to be able to sit down and do self-care and binge watch a tv show or read a book is to get everything out of your head like 
stop thinking about all of the things. And if you have things that you're thinking about all of the time while you're trying to do self-care, write them down, get them out of your head. Just get that out of your head. And I tell everybody that for planning anyway, get things out of your head. Your head is not for remembering things. But when your head is like swimming with all of these things, sometimes just getting them out of your head, it is a really good thing in order to be able to relax too. The things to remember is a good portion of self-care tasks also bring in dopamine people. Things for me that are self-care and dopamine hacking is I like to play video games. Video games really is a relaxation thing for me. I get a big dopamine hit. So I've got a couple that I choose on my phone to make it really easy for me to do that throughout the day. Reading a book, watching a TV show, and again, not a business book. In here is all my business stuff. I have all of my fun, my mysteries, all my novels and stuff in my bedroom. And I have a couch and I have a little reading nook in my bedroom so that I am Again, I have a lock on my door to keep me out of my office because I need to take that full on um, break and get out of my workspace. Otherwise, I'm living here. So repetitive motion for some people is a really big deal. Fidget toys, that can be self-care, believe it or not. I pulled this thing apart so many times now it doesn't stay together anymore. What are things that you can do to take care of yourself throughout the day? Now, I'm going to bring this into dopamine hacking. So what is dopamine? Dopamine is the thing that gives you motivation. It's the thing that creates energy. And it's the thing that helps your brain work correctly. What's the thing that we're always out of? Dopamine. And there are dopamine traps. And there are unhealthy ways to search for dopamine. And I will tell you that this right here, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, all of those things are really, really bad versions of dopamine for you. Why? Because they are quick kits that are a major high, but you want to know what major highs have? Major crashes. So I'm going to start encouraging you to find things to do that don't require picking up this phone to create dopamine for yourself. Now, I just said I like to play video games and I have some video games on my phone. I also have them on my computer and I have a video game system in my living room that I play. Find ways to get away from the thing that you're also working on. The reason for that is it gets harder to work on the thing that you're also seeking for dopamine on. And you're more likely to get stuck in the doom scrolling on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and all of that instead of working. And it makes actually doing your designated things that you need to do for your business that much harder. Aria, I get stuck in dopamine traps like chasing the dopamine of Facebook all day instead of actually doing anything helpful for future me. Yep. And that's those dopamine highs and those dopamine lows that I just talked about. So sandwiches. You all have heard me talk about sandwiches. If you're new here and you haven't, type in sandwich into the search bar. Find the sandwich video. I'm wearing a white and gray sweatshirt. Go watch it. I'm not going to explain what sandwich is. But there's a reason why you will notice that the in-between pieces for dopamine, every single one of them is a physical action. Celebrating getting the task done. Go get up, walk around, take a walk, hug a dog. Pet a kitty, get some coffee, sweep your floors, do some laundry. Believe it or not, even those tasks, and you're like, but that's a home task and a work task. And if I do that, I'm going to get distracted. No, getting up and physically doing something, you're going to create dopamine for yourself just by getting up and being physical. And you're like, well, this is boring and this isn't fun. And I'm dopamine is fun and I want to do fun things for dopamine. But Laura, can I have a ham and switch with mayo, please? Have you gotten any tasks done and celebrated them yet? And then maybe we could talk about an actual sandwich there, Laura. So what are you doing to celebrate yourself? Giving your brain a break from staring at a screen or a work task every 30 to 45 minutes is giving you dopamine, it is giving you more energy, and it's giving you the way to get stuck out of the stuckness. I see so many people stuck this week so far. It is only Tuesday. So what are you doing to get unstuck? How are you going to create a space for you to get unstuck? Sandwich. Create sandwiches. I swear to you, creating a sandwich is not a ham and Swiss. Creating a sandwich with your task is going to help you get that much more done. So how can not creating structure systems, the consistency again, well, y'all, you notice we come back to that a whole lot, but how does not having those things in place affect your self-care and getting stuck? How does all of those things create self-sabotage? How can self-care, how can not having self-care and not creating structure and consistency be a form of self-sabotage? Why is that self-sabotage? Aria, because the chaos of life is the perfect excuse to not move forward on anything besides survival tasks. 
So familiarity, change is scary. Change is terrifying. I have been in chaos mode for so long that it's almost more comfortable than peace. Is that valid? Hell yeah, I've been in chaos mode for so long that it is almost more comfortable than peace. Aria says, setting a goal slash timeline and then subconsciously giving up before I've seen what I can do because I am so used to failing my goals. So Jessica says, I don't actually know what I really want. Over the next seven days, what is it that you actually want? What do you want to experience? Every, I want to be able to sit in calmly in peace and then also be able to get in flow in a flow state for productivity. You can do that. Show up to a body doubling session. Every single person that gets shows up to those sessions gets into a flow. It may take them a few times and it, to be able to do that, but they get into a flow. So again, we come back to this and I, we say this all the time. Consistency is your key to getting out of overwhelm, getting out of all of the things, the shame, the guilt. It's that consistency. And what the consistency is in is consistency in setting yourself up for success. Jessica says, this is basic foundation of dog training. Find out what you don't want the dog to do, jumping on visitors, and teach them what you want them to do instead. Sit politely, go to, etc. Yeah. You can't change a bad habit. And not change a bad habit. You have to replace it with a good one. And you're like, but that's changing the bad one. No, you can't change the habit of never picking up your wrapper from your candy bars. If you're always throwing that on the counter, you're not going to change that bad habit because your body is going to just automatically do that. You're going to be fighting against it and fighting against it creates emotional overwhelm. It causes dysregulation. It causes frustration. It causes shame. But if you're going to, oh, when I open my candy bar, I'm going to stand next to the garbage can and throw the candy bar wrapper away immediately. You're creating a new thing to do. Jessica says, note to self. Treat myself more like I treat my dogs. Never yell. Lots of love and snuggles. Focus on the good behaviors. Baby step. Any changes? That's the perfect ending to our video. Have an amazing day. And we will be back to discuss this via Q&A on Thursday. So if you want some free coaching, if you have a lot of questions around this, ask them below this video or from Thursday Live. And we will answer them all. Bye. Bye.